Today we'll talk about digestive glands and we'll begin from salivary glands. They produce saliva. Uh, so we have uh, two groups of salivary glands. There are major salivary glands, large salivary glands. Uh, they are paired. There are parotid glands, there are uh, submandibular gland uh, and sublingual gland. Uh, so three pairs of major large salivary glands. They have a big volume. Uh, they are located uh, in the tissues which surround oral cavity and they have uh, ducts which are opened in the oral cavity. So there are large salivary glands or major salivary glands. Uh, parotid, uh, some mandibular and some lipal gland. And also we have minor salivary glands, small salivary glands, which are located in the mucosa and submucosa of oral cavity. Uh, they are microscopic structures and they haven't uh, own uh, capsule. They are located in connective tissue of lamina propria of mucosa and in uh, connective tissue of uh, submucosa. And their ducts also are opened on the surface of mucosa of oral cavity. They are located in mucosa and submucosa of lips, of cheeks, of tongue, uh, of heart and soft palate. And also they produce some amount of saliva. So what are the differences between them? Uh, large major salivary glands are distinct organs. They have connective tissue capsule, which covers them, and they have big um, excretory duct, which is opened in the oral cavity. But uh, main volume tissue of those glands is located out of oral cavity. It's called a body of the gland, and it's the duct. So they are located uh, uh, near the oral cavity, but not in the mucosa and submucosa of oral cavity. But minor salivary glands, they haven't own capsule. They also have short, small ducts, uh, and they are located inside the oral cavity. Uh, minor salivary glands, they produce saliva in small amounts, and um, they produce it continuously. And uh, major salivary glands, they are under control of um, nervous regulation uh, and they mainly produce saliva uh, during mastication when you eat something and they produce a lot of saliva. So there are main differences of major and minor salivary glands. And today we'll talk uh, mainly about major salivary glands and let's begin from the cells which form the so there are two types of secrets uh, of exocrine glands by chemical composition with serous type uh, or protein type and mucus type. And cells which provide uh, those types of secretion are called serocyte and mucocyte or serous cell and mucus cell. Uh, they provide different kinds of secretion. Uh, so there are serous cells they are darkly stained, they have pyramidal or triangular uh, shape, and uh, they uh, produce watery fluid, uh, and this fluid is rich of um, proteins. Uh, and I think you know about kinds of saliva, sometimes saliva is very uh, fluid, it uh, contains a lot of water, so serocytes, they produce this type of saliva. Uh, these serocytes or serous cells, they have this uh, triangular or pyramidal shape, and they have well developed rough endoplasmic reticulum because they produce a lot of proteins. Here we can see this rough endoplasmic reticulum. And um, proteins, they are produced here. After that, uh, transport vesicles, they carry proteins from rough endoplasmic reticulum to the next organelle. It's a Golgi apparatus. It provides final processing of proteins uh, of saliva and uh, it forms secretory vesicles which contain uh, those secretory products. Uh, for example, there are some enzymes. Uh, amylase is present in saliva and uh, those granules, they contain different secretory products and after that they are released from the cell via exocytosis. 
So here we can see functioning of the serous secretory cell. Uh, also, we have mucous cells or mucocytes. Here we can see them. They are lightly stained and they produce mucus rich secretion. They produce mucus, and main component of mucus is mucin and its carbohydrate, its polysaccharide. Uh, so, mucocytes, uh, here we can see mucocytes, uh, they have a rough endoplasmic reticulum, but also they have well developed. Uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, it uh, takes bigger volume than rough endoplasmic reticulum. Here we can see this smooth endoplasmic reticulum. It provides secretion of carbohydrates, of polysaccharides. And after this secretion, uh, carbohydrates are carried by transport vesicles to the Golgi apparatus, which forms secretory vesicles, which contain mucus. Here we can see uh, mucus inclusions in the mucoside. And when we uh, apply a uh, routine um, uh, staining method, for example, hemotoxylin and eosin, it doesn't reveal mucus in the mucosides. Those places in the cell, they look like empty. Uh, but when we apply special staining methods, which reveal mucus, we can find this mucus in the cells and uh, we can distinguish different mucosides. Uh, and uh, those mucus, which is produced and accumulated by the cell, is released from the cell via exocytosis. So here we can see how mucoside provides its own functions. So uh, serocytes and mucocytes, they form secretory unit. Secretory cells, they form secretory unit. It's group of cells, usually spheric or oval shape. Uh, and uh, they produce main components of saliva. And this secretory unit is opened into the excretory duct. Here we can see small duct. This duct is called intercalated. And uh, this duct, um, it's the way how saliva is released from the secretory unit. So this duct, it's way for secretory product of secretory cells. And secretory cells, they are surrounded by special cells. They are shown in pink shade here. They are called myoepithelial cells. Here we can see they are located between the secretory cells and base of membrane. They are located here and they have ability for contractions. And when they are contracted, they push out secretory products from the secretory cells to the duct and also they surround the duct and their contractions they help to move fluid inside the secretory units and ducts. Here we can see the shape of myoepithelial cells. Uh, they are modified myocytes, they are related to smooth myocytes. They have star-like shape and they surround secretory units and uh, also small ducts, and they uh, have ability for contraction. They help to release different secretory products from the secretory cells. And uh, here we can see secretory unit, uh, which is composed of uh, secretory cells and another secretory unit, and they are surrounded by myoepithelial cells. Uh, so secretory units, they are composed of three types of cells serocytes or mucocytes, two types of secretory cells, and non-secretory contractive cells, they are myoepithelial cells. Uh, and secretory unit uh, is opened into the duct. Here we can see unit and its the duct. Uh, in some sections, histological sections, we can distinguish both parts, secretory unit and duct. And when we cut this unit in this plane, we will see only secretory units on the histological sections. Also, they are surrounded by these myoepithelial cells, and uh, they are located on the base of the brain. And those structures, they are surrounded by loose fibrous connective tissue. Here we can see this connective tissue. So here we can see secretory units and the smallest ducts of the salivary glands. They are called intercalated ducts.
And uh, here we can see typical structure of the exocrine gland. And we can see that specific feature of the livery glands uh, is the presence of myoepithelial cells. Uh, this uh, can uh, be uh, identified under the microscope and uh, they are characteristic for exocrine glands which have ectodermal origin. The livery, also memory glands, but for example pancreas, uh, it doesn't have myoepithelial cells because pancreas it develops from endoderm. So only glands with ectodermal origin, such as salivary glands, they have myoepithelial cells, which surround secretory units. And secretory units, uh, they uh, may contain serous cells, also they may contain mucous cells, and some secretory units, they contain both types of cells, serous, and mucous cells. Uh, so secretory units are of three types. They may be serous, they include only serous cells or serocytes. They may be mucous, they include only mucocytes. And also there are mixed secretory units, which are called also seromucous. They include both types of cells, there are serocytes and mucocytes. They are present here. And serocytes, uh, they usually are included between mucocytes near the end, near the bottom of secretory unit. And so they uh, form serous demilune. Here we can see demilune, it's part of uh, secretory unit. And uh, there are serous cells which form this demilune. Uh, so here we can see serous, mucous, and mixed uh, secretory unit. Uh, and uh, here we can see serous secretory unit. It's composed of serocytes. Uh, here we can see uh, intercalated duct, which is attached to the serous secretory unit. And it's continued by a striated duct. Here we can see striated duct. And it has uh, cells. They are epithelial columnar cells. It's simple uh, columnar epithelium. And uh, those cells, they have basal foldings or basal striations. They are visible here. So a serous uh, secretory unit is opened into the intercalated duct, which is continued by striated duct. Uh, this unit, it produces primary saliva. Uh, it's released here. Primary saliva is very close in the um, composition to the plasma of blood. Uh, it's isotonic fluid, which also contains some salt. So primary saliva, it's a little bit salty. And this saliva goes to the, inter uh, to the striated duct. And in the striated duct, we have reabsorption of sodium, there is sodium potassium pump, and sodium uh, goes back to the blood, and it's removed from saliva, and it results that uh, finally secondary saliva uh, is um, hypotonic, it's not salty, uh, as you know. Uh, so salt from saliva is obtained by uh, striated uh, duct cells of striated ducts and uh, because they have basal striations or basal foldings they uh, contain numerous mitochondria here near the basal pole and they uh, remove uh, salt from uh, saliva and it results in the formation of the secondary saliva. Also we have here uh, mucoepithelial uh, myoepithelial cells which surround these uh, secretory units and also we have basement membrane and also it's uh, loose fibrous connective tissue which surrounds the secretory unit and duct. And here you can see mucous secretory unit. It's composed of mucosides and they are opened in short intercalated duct and we can see that it's very short because cells of intercalated duct, uh, they became to be mucosides. Uh, so in mucous secretory units, intercalated ducts are very short. Uh, and uh, this duct, street duct also is present. So it's mucous secretory unit. Also myoepithelial cells are present here and they are surrounded with basic membrane and loose fibrous connective tissue. So it's mucous secretory unit.
And also we have mixed type. It's serum mucus secretory unit. Here we can see uh, it's uh, serous demilum, inclusion of sec uh, serous secretory cells between the mucocytes. And usually, traditionally, they form demilum inclusion of serous cells between the mucocytes. So here we can see serous, mucus, and mixed secretory units. And we can see their appearance under the microscope. Here we can see serous secretory unit. It's alveolar or acinar in shape. Uh, here we can see round shape of this secretory unit. Here we can see serum mucus and it's uh, serous demilune inclusion of serocytes. They usually are darkly stains and mucocytes. Here we can see mucocytes. And it's completely mucus secretory unit. And on this slide, we can see a uh, mixed uh, salivary gland, which has uh, serous secretory units. They are acinar in shape, uh, mixed with serous demilune, and there are mucosides and uh, mucous secretory units. Mixed and uh, mucous secretory units, they are closer to tubular glands. So we can classify uh, these secretory units as tubular and uh, serous are easier. And also we can find here small tubules found by a simple cuboid epithelium. There are intercalated ducts, they are here, and bigger ducts which are lined uh, with simple columnar epithelium. Here we can see with basal striations, those ducts are striated ducts. And here on this slide, we can find uh, serocytes, they are violet, uh, and also mucocytes, they are almost white, and different secretory units. This one is serous, it's seromucus or mixed, and this one is mainly mucus. Uh, and ducts, as you already know, there are intercalated ducts, they are the smallest. They are aligned with simple cuboid epithelium and uh, they are intercalated between secretory unit and striated duct. Striated is lined with simple columnar epithelium with basal striations. And uh, these uh, ducts, uh, they uh, form uh, interlobular, uh, intralobular uh, duct system inside the lobule. Uh, this intercalated uh, smallest duct, uh, it uh, is intercalated between serous uh, or mucous secretory unit and uh, striated duct, and uh, it's not only a uh, connecting tubule, it also participates in the regeneration. Those cells, they are the stem cells, and they provide regeneration of uh, this um, gland. Uh, and uh, here we can see intercalated duct, small tubule lined with simple cuboid epithelium, and its striated duct, uh, bigger tubule lined with simple columnar epithelium. And we can see here serous secretory unit, uh, mucus, and serum mucus, and uh, there are intercalated ducts. They are well developed in serous secretory units and striated ducts, and together they form system, branched system of uh, intralobular uh, excretory duct of the uh, salivary glands. So they are branched inside the lobule. So saliva uh, is produced by serous uh, or mucous secretory units. They form, they are groups, they form the lobules. Here we can see lobules of the gland. Here we can see them. Uh, and uh, they um, are formed by secretory units, which are surrounded with loose fibrous connective tissue. Here we can see this uh, intralobular connective tissue. And between the lobules, we can find here septa. It's dense connective tissue. And also we have capsule. Also, it's dense connective tissue. Uh, it forms capsule and septa, which begin from capsule, and there are lobules. In the lobules, we have loose connective tissue, and there are secretory units and intralobular ducts inside the lobules. And those intralobular ducts, they uh, collect saliva from the lobule and excite uh, from the lobules, and uh, here they form interlobular ducts between the lobules. 
and those interlobular ducts they are located in the interlobular connective tissue. So we have interlobular ducts which uh, collect saliva from some uh, lobules and uh, as a result they form common duct of of the gland. Here we can see this common duct which excites from the gland. Uh, so let's look at the structure of salivary gland. Here we can see secretory units. They produce saliva and saliva is carried by the ducts. Here we can see duct system. Uh, there are uh, intralobular ducts and interlobular ducts which excite from the lobules and they form common duct of the salivary gland. Uh, Secretory units and ducts inside the lobules are surrounded with uh, loose fibrous connective tissue, and between them there are septa, and entire gland is covered with connective tissue capsule. So it's typical structure of the exocrine gland. And this structure, similar to this, we can found also in the pancreas, and we'll look at the structure of pancreas. Uh, and uh, here we can see. Um, that uh, glands, they have two main components. Uh, there are parenchyma and stroma. Parenchyma of the gland, it includes secretory units. Here we can see units or acini. One unit is acinus. And also it includes ducts. So there are specific epithelial structures of salivary gland, which provide main function of this gland, production of saliva and uh, release of it to uh, oral cavity. So parenchyma is a epithelial component of the gland uh, which provides main function of the gland and it provides specific functions. For example, here we can found parenchyma of the gland, epithelial part of the gland. And also glands, they have stroma, it's connective tissue. Uh, stroma uh, includes um, uh, interlobular uh, septa and uh, capsule, it's dense fibrous connective tissue, and also stroma includes intralobular connective tissue, it's loose fibrous connective tissue. Uh, they aren't specific and they don't provide main function which is provided by the parenchyma, but stroma it helps parenchyma to provide own functions. And stroma uh, it's usually connective tissue, also there are blood vessels and nerves, so it's supporting apparatus of the gland, infrastructure of the gland. Uh, it's non-specific part of the organ, but it's necessary for the providing the functions of this organ. So, epithelial part of the gland, it's parenchyma, and connective tissue, it's stroma, it's filler, it also maintains the parenchyma, it helps to provide functions of the parenchyma. And parenchyma is located inside the stroma. So here we can see uh, secretory units, they are surrounded with connective tissue stroma, uh, intralobular stroma, also there are septa and capsule, and there are ducts. Uh, on the sections they have oval shape or round shape and they form parenchyma of the gland. And here we can see parenchyma, uh, different epithelial structures, uh, secretory units and ducts and stroma, it's connective tissue supporting apparatus of the gland. Uh, and uh, here we can see a histological slide of the gland, here we can see septa, which divide a tissue of the gland into the lobules. Here we can see lobules of the salivary gland. Here we can see distinct lobules. And uh, here we can see lobules of the salivary gland and there are septa. Inside the lobules we can found uh, intralobular ducts and between the lobules we can find uh, interlobular ducts. They are present here. Uh, and those ducts, uh, the smaller ducts, they are lined with uh, stratified cuboid or columnar epithelium, and bigger uh, ducts and common duct, uh, they are lined with stratified spinous non keratinized epithelium, which transits into the epithelium of oral cavity. Uh, and here we can see intralobular ducts, they are smaller, they may be intercalated or striated. And uh, interlobular ducts, they are bigger, they usually have stratified cuboid or columnar epithelium, which transits into stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium in this region. Um, and salivary glands, they may contain different 
types of secretory units. Some glands, they are, uh, they have only zero secretory units and uh, they are called serous. Some glands, they contain only mucous secretory units and they are called mucous. And some glands, they contain all three types or two and more types of secretory units. They are mixed. They may include serous, mucous, and mixed secretory units. Uh, in a uh, human organism, uh, we can found only serous and mixed seromucous large salivary glands and uh, completely mucous large salivary glands in humans are absent. They may be found in some animals, but we have only serous or mixed seromucous salivary glands. Uh, parotid gland, uh, it's completely serous gland. Some mandibular gland, it's mixed, and sublingual gland also is mixed. So we have two mixed glands, and one is completely serous, it's parotid gland. Here we can see parotid gland uh, structure, and it contains only serous secretory units. Uh, and um, this gland is called serous. And on this slide we can see here serous secretory units. Uh, and also we have uh, here intercalated straight ducts. It's uh, interlobular connective tissue. It's, it forms septa. And in the septa we can found uh, interlobular ducts which are lined with a certified cuboid epithelium. Here we can see. And uh, certified epithelium in the ducts of the glands is a specific feature of glands which have ectodermal origin as well as presence of myoepithelial cells. So, uh, stratified epithelium in the interlobular ducts may be present only in the ectodermal glands, such as salivary glands, mammary glands, and some other. And also, here we can see uh, blood vessels. Uh, they, big blood vessels, they are present in the interlobular connective tissue. And uh, here we can see parotid gland on small and uh, big magnification. On small magnification, we can see here uh, secretory uh, units. Um, we can see here lobules. And on big magnification, we can see here secretory units. And it's interlobular connective tissue with duct. And also we have two mixed glands. They are submandibular and uh, sublingual. So submandibular gland, it contains serous and seromucous secretory units. So it's mixed gland, but serous type of secretion prevails. And sublingual gland, it has three types of secretory units, serous, seromucous, and mucous. And in this type of gland, mucous type of secretion prevails. So, two mixed glands, but different types of secretion prevail. Here we can see mixed gland. In this gland, we can see uh, all three types of secretory units. Uh, there are serous, serum mucus, and mucus secretory units. Uh, so, we can conclude that uh, it's sublingual gland, uh, according to its structure, because completely mucus secretory units are present here. Uh, also, we can find here intercalated ducts, uh, striated ducts, and it's uh, interlobular connective tissue, it's septa, which contains sections of the interlobular ducts. They are lined with uh, stratified cuboid epithelium. And uh, here we can compare its mixed gland. In this gland, uh, serous secretory units are present, and serum mucus. Here we can see, and in this gland, mainly mucous secretory units are present. So we can compare two mixed glands. In this gland, serous type of secretion prevails. In this gland, mucous type of secretion prevails.